Hey everyone, it's Tom with Hidden Beats. Today we have Mariah Stokes. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Tom. How are you doing? As good as can be. It's pretty, it's raining here today, so it's, you know, nice and kind of drab, but that's okay. I feel that. We uh, have had rain out here in Alberta for the past few weeks, and it's been very interesting trying to play shows out here uh, with sound checks being pushed back and production mm. teams trying to uh, kind of navigate the changing weather out here. They Do you know that, do you know what they say about Alberta weather? Uh, I used to live there once upon a time, but no, I'm not really familiar. <laughs> they say, uh, well, you, you'd probably be really familiar with this then. If you don't like the weather in Alberta, just wait five minutes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ottawa is actually very similar now. That's where that's where I'm based out of. And you could literally have five seasons in one day type of thing. That's. I think that's part of the joy. If you can get like a hailstorm, a rainstorm, and then sunshine and maybe a little bit of snow, then that's just, you know, that's just spring in Canada, hey? exactly nowadays that's just the way it is yeah totally <laughs> so for those who aren't as familiar with you do you want to give kind of a little intro about yourself and your music to the listeners slash viewers yeah absolutely um i'm a country artist and songwriter based out of uh, alberta i originally grew up in stavely alberta which is a tiny little town about an hour south and now i'm based in calgary and i've been doing country music for well, basically, I've loved country music for my whole life, but I've been performing it for the last few years and writing and singing, and that's uh, that's kind of the baseline of where I come from. Mm -hmm. I like I was actually born in Alberta in Wainwright, right on the military base, the Buffalo Ranch that they had going on there. But I was only there for six months and then gone. That's so funny. I was supposed to play a show in Wainwright this weekend. It got uh, moved, so we're not going up there. But I was going to spend uh, this weekend in Wainwright as of uh, yesterday. Not anymore, but that's that's pretty cool. How long were you in Alberta for? So I was so born in Alberta. We lived there for until I was six months. And then, like, so I was an Army brat. I moved around all over the place. Went back, lived in Calgary for grade six, and then oh, was and was gone from there. You must have made a lot of friends all over the place. Or none at all because we moved around too quickly. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. That's also a thing. That's so tough as a kid, hey? Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It made me who I am today, so can't go wrong. Totally. Awesome. So I want to talk a bit about your growing up in music and kind of how you got started as an artist. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I was really little and I was in Stavely, I used to sit on the steps outside of the bar um, in my hometown. I was literally raised in a bar and I would watch all the bands come through town and also my dad uh, drummed in a bar band. And so uh, I watched all of the musicians play together and that was really, really intriguing for me how uh, folks can kind of communicate without words with each other. The, the, the language of music was really interesting to me and uh, I liked singing in my room and stuff. So I got invited to come on stage and sneak into the bar when I was like eight and uh, perform, you know, a little bit of Johnny Cash and Patsy Cline and uh, a lot of the classics that I grew up on. And after that, I was hooked. I started um, singing at uh, rodeos and doing the anthem and then at bridal showers and then as i grew up i decided that uh I, th I thought i wanted to pursue this maybe as a career so i moved to the city when i was 18 and got a job as a server and started trying to figure out how to do this thing full time and then when i was i think 20 i quit my job and started teaching a little bit and i've been a full-time musician ever since just uh kind of waiting through uh the music industry and trying to figure it out as i go mm -hmm. And it's definitely been interesting the last couple of years, too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Everything has changed. For me, I know that I was able to spend a lot of time songwriting, which was really wonderful over the past few years. But uh, my mental health took a little bit of a hit. I didn't realize how much playing live and connecting with um, our, our community at shows and even just at industry events, how important that was for me. And so it's been really, really great the last few months being able to perform again and see folks in person. And I'm so much more grateful for, for those opportunities and, and our community and the connections after mm -hmm. uh, having it virtually for a little while. Yeah, definitely. It affected a lot of people very differently. So it's nice to be back, back to normal almost and having yeah. fun with music. Yeah, just being able to be on stage is such a treat. Mm -hmm. Who were some of your musical inspirations, I guess, when you were coming up, like some artists that you really, you tried to mimic or take pieces from? 
I feel like you probably hear this answer a lot, but the reason I started playing guitar when I was 14 was because of Taylor Swift. I heard our song on the radio and was like, oh my gosh, I think that song was written for me. Like that feels like something I could sing and I'd never heard anything like that in country music. And so at that point I picked up a guitar and learned my first three chords and then started writing songs. And then from there discovered uh, Casey Musgraves, her records, same trailer, different park is still to this day, one of my favorites. Lindy Ortega is another huge, okay. huge favorite of mine. She's incredible. Yeah, Tin Star was the record that I really, really gravitated towards, as well as uh, uh, Cigarettes and Truck Stops, I believe is the, the title of the other one. But yeah, those were a few of my really big influences when I started out. And I think I read actually a couple spots. Uh, they compared you to Casey Musgraves and who was it? Uh, Megan, Ma Trainor. Megan Trainor, if if you, yeah. if they had like a country love child. <laughs> yeah, I think Megan Trainor's first record is one of my favorites as well. It's so sassy and the production and the musicality of it is so, uh, it nods to the 1950s big time and the, mm -hmm. the doo-wop era. And then you combine the, the cleverness of her lyrics as, along with the cleverness of Casey's lyrics. And uh, that's, those are two of my faves for sure as well. Mm, and, and I could kind of see that in your music a little bit too. I was listening to some of your stuff earlier and I'm, after reading that, I was like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, the, the 1970s style aesthetic is definitely a huge influence for me. And uh, I'm, I really love how so many of these trends that have happened musically in past decades are being reinvented right now. It's very, very cool. Yeah, I've, I've noticed quite a lot of that too. And just the, well, COVID, everybody was able to do a little bit more with music and gave you the opportunity to experience more and try to experiment and play with different things so made it really nice yeah absolutely and the other thing about you know covid and having to move remote it's been really interesting because i've been working with people and a lot of the musicians that i've talked to are also working with people that are outside of our local areas um my production team is based here in calgary and i absolutely love them uh spencer Cheen and justin cutting and also i've been able to work on some like edm stuff with a couple uk producers which has been interesting and collaborating with songwriters in the states and i think before covid it wasn't set up so that we could do that but with all of the technology developing so fast it's become so much more ac accessible for for artists and producers and songwriters to connect remotely, which I think is pretty, pretty freaking cool. Mm -hmm. That actually kind of transitions to my next point about your process when coming up with music. Do you like to sit and write kind of alone in a room or how, how do you come up with your stuff? Uh, I heard a quote once somebody said, actually, it was, uh, I was in a songwriting workshop with um, Ryan from Mother Mother. It was incredible. And he spoke about creativity being like a faucet. And basically when you turn it on, uh, at first it's really, really rusty and the water that runs out hasn't, uh, if it hasn't been used in a while, it takes a second for the faucet to start flowing. But then if you're using it all the time, you can kind of find ideas and inspiration everywhere. And so I have a little hookbook on my phone and my notes and anytime somebody says something that's kind of interesting, I'll write it down or um, if I hear uh, a melody out of the air or you know, in the world around me that kind of inspires me, then I'll uh, record that. And so the process changes a lot. Sometimes I'll sit solo and write from those ideas. Sometimes inspiration will strike me and uh, I'll just have to capture it in that moment. It's like that weird little lightning bolt connection. And sometimes I show up to a co-write and I have no idea what to work on. And a co-writer will bring a title or a melody or an idea or a story that they wanna work on. And uh, we just grab onto it and, and uh, you know ride the train until the song's finished. I think my audio just cut out or I'm not sure if you can oh. still hear me right now. Yeah, I can hear you. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Now you're back. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. I, I got the, and literally at the end of that, it just kind of went blank for a second. And I was oh, like, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> you want me to redo the sentence? No, no. I, I got the end of the sentence. It just oh. stopped after. And I was like, oh, well, that's weird. <laughs> Part of the fun, you know, we've uh, made some technology jumps for sure, but uh, if I didn't forget to unmute my audio at the beginning of Zoom meeting or have some sort of technical hiccup, then would we would we be meeting virtually right now, Tom? Exactly. And I think probably <laughs> one out of every four interviews I do, there's something that happens. Totally, totally. But yeah, so, so we'll go on from there. Um, I listened to a couple of your recent singles and a lot of them seem to do with the kind of idea of love relationships and things like that. Is that something very pertinent with you right now? 
So uh, wait, hold on, uh, Tom. Are you implying that a that an artist in country music <laughs> would write about relationships? Oh my goodness. Well, yeah. I'm saying more recently. I mean. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think relationship dynamics are some of the most fascinating things to explore um, in songs. Uh, songwriting to me, it's a a really good song is one that is personal, but through the personal, we get the universal. And if relationships are, are things that we all experience. And there's so many different nuances and dynamics within those relationships to explore. I feel like I could write like a hundred records probably about different relationship dynamics, but uh, I do write about other things as well. The first four <laughs> singles were pretty um, relationship focused, but we have, we have some other ones in the can that are definitely more focused on your self relationships, I guess, if that makes sense, relationships with yourself and, uh, and how we view ourselves as humans. Mm -hmm. The first one that I, I picked up was rebound. And then I went from there and started kind of going down your list a bit. So that's where I got the, the relationship -y feel to everything. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So with, I mean, with COVID being a big thing, do you, what did I write here? On your, so did you find it hard to adjust to trying to involve social media a lot more or how did you adapt to doing that during COVID? My relationship with sh social media has definitely shifted throughout COVID. Um, at the very beginning, it was interesting. So I lived with my best friend, her name is Elena. And she, so I'm in the music industry, obviously. So all of my shows were canceled and she managed a restaurant and her restaurant shut down. So we were in our little house and we're trying to figure out what to do with our time and also not drive each other um, wild as you know, people who are in <laughs> close yep. confined spaces do. And uh, we were uh, you know, watching the news and, and trying to keep up to date and figure what was going on. And what we kind of realized is how lucky we were to have each other during this time and really felt big time, especially for parents who are at home with small children or kids who are in school. I cannot imagine the stress and what a change it would be to be at home, um, you know, trying to work and also having kids. And so we decided to start a live stream called Fire with Mariah and Elena. So on Mondays I would do, or sorry, yeah, Mondays I think I would do my adult live stream where I would just play some songs and kind of connect with people for an hour. But on Fridays, this is where it got really interesting, we, um, decided to start a children's live stream that was about 20 minutes long and so Elena has all these wild costumes I don't know why but she <laughs> literally had a whole pickle trunk she's a woman in her 20s and just is like incredibly creative with with that kind of stuff and so we would pick a theme each week and then learn a few songs she's not a musician but she's a really uh, a really good singer with a good ear and we would put together these goofy little skits and dress up in these wild costumes we did like campfire with Mariah and Elena and we did a big bad wolf theme and we did a cat's theme and um, that occupied a lot of our time because so much of it was planning how to uh, to build the shows and engage with audiences. And it was funny. It started off mostly for kids and then a lot of adults actually started tuning in. I think they because they just thought it was funny that we were singing all these childhood classics and dressed up in these wild costumes. So that that's kind of where it started. And then. Um, I was doing some some Zoom shows. We did a virtual release show for my my single "Break My Heart," and actually did a a show for a UK based audience over Zoom, which was really cool. Um, but also, I struggled a little bit with socials because I wasn't again my my mental health wasn't 100. percent I was going through a lot of things just trying to navigate this, as I'm sure everyone else was, or a lot of folks were as well. And so, I stopped posting as much. Um, probably later in 2021 even, just because I don't like pretending things are good when they're not on socials. And uh, yeah, so so it was a little bit of a, a changing relationship. It goes in and out. I mean, that kind of, I would imagine that's a lot of people had that same type of thing. I know myself, It's it was easy enough for me to get on socials, but I didn't have content to put out. So it was kind of, what am I going to do? And then these interviews started up and things kind of went differently that way, but I'm a work from home guy. So the being at home didn't bother me whatsoever. That's great. Yeah. I'm always really happy to hear it when folks are, uh, are had a, had an easier time and, uh, and especially it's gotta be handy working from home and then just having the opportunity to set up that space a little bit more efficiently for yourself. Hey, 
it started a little a little bit rough because we so my wife and I lived in a one bedroom apartment. Oh my so, gosh! So trying to figure that out when she was so she was a hair salon manager and got locked down and laid off for a bit, and we ended up moving partway through to a two bedroom, which made my life a lot easier. Well, and I'm yeah. sure hers as well, especially if you work from home and she, uh, and I don't want to make assumptions about your wife, but I'm guessing that she's probably a pretty social human if she's uh, doing hair salon things and chatting with people all day. And so even those, uh, those needs for socializing and stuff are so mm-hmm. interesting to navigate and uh, have been interesting to talk about and watch with, with different folks who are, who are living together over the past little bit. Yeah. She liked the idea of being on vacation for a bit, but after a while it was like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go back now. Totally. Right. And different appreciation for, for what you do and the people that are around you after a year or two or three, like the last few we've had. Mm -hmm. No, it was pretty crazy, but everything's kind of getting a little bit more normal now, at least. That's wicked. And people can get haircuts again, which is very important (laughs) because there was a wild, uh, all the, all the guys were growing out their hair, which honestly I I liked it. It was great. But uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, I got my first haircut in like a year. (laughs) I mean, myself, uh, I'm going bald. So for me, it was real simple to maintain and her being here, it was just a quick buzz for me. So totally, totally. That's awesome. So how, how do you see the music scene around, around home now that everything's coming back is, has there been lots of excitement and shows going on and I guess festival seasons coming up? Yeah, absolutely. There has been a definite shift. And even, uh, you know, when things were locked down, Calgary was pretty innovative when it came to still making music happen. I know that we did a drive-in concert, a few drive-in concerts, actually, um, that were really, um, oh, they just fueled my soul. It was so, so wonderful to connect with folks again, even if there was a little bit of distance and people were in cars. And then also um, there was the, um, oh my goodness, what are they called? like the plastic barriers that was really yeah. strange we did a, a show at the king eddie and it was the first one of a series that was happening it was the homegrown country music alberta spotlight so my band was actually on stage at the king eddie and i was in a separate room behind glass i felt like a like a little <laughs> bit of a zoo animal or something mm-hmm. and it was uh it was live streamed and that was a really really interesting experience because it almost felt like I was in studio recording instead of performing at a live show. So uh, a few opportunities came out of the past few years that I never, ever would have expected would have happened. Um, But now things are definitely coming back. We see a lot of the major festivals happening. I get to travel to Cavendish Beach Music Festival this summer, which is so exciting. I've never been to PEI and I'm looking forward to performing out there. Calgary Stampede is coming back again for for the second year, which is great. And we're uh, playing at Nashville North as well. So it's very, very, very cool to be able to to do the thing again. And also to see fans and people who love music in general showing up to these events. There's a different kind of energy and a different kind of appreciation for live music, not only with, you know, the fans and the people who love live music, but again, with the artists and uh, and the industry as a whole. Mm-hmm. Actually, that's how you came across my desk was the Cavendish Festival, and the I jumped at the opportunity to get to talk to as many of the of the artists going there as I could. So it was nice to be able to connect with you on that. Yeah, absolutely. We're playing out there on July seventh on the Colliding Tides Kitchen Stage, and that is going to be an absolute blast. I have a uh, my friend Ben Chase actually is from PEI originally, and has said so many great things about the festival and. Uh, Also, I don't know, have you found this, Tom? Most of the people that I meet from the East Coast are actually incredible musicians. Uh, Mm -hmm. It seems to be woven into the fabric of the culture out there. I don't know what that's about, but like the kitchen party jams and things like that, it's just, it's incredible, the the, the music culture out there. So I'm excited to experience that. Yeah, you're almost born musically inclined or in a musical family out there. It's just, it's what keeps them busy. Yeah, it's uh, it's very cool, and we definitely have a little bit of that in Alberta, but uh, it's a different level of talent, and uh, almost, yeah, everybody plays out there, it seems like, and maybe I'm generalizing, and that's not the case, but uh, that's what it seems like to, to a little Alberta kid who's met a few people from the East Coast. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I find Alberta's more like cowboy country versus the East Coast is like family country. It's kind of just everybody's a little bit different, but it's all yeah. music. Totally. Absolutely. Well, we have like the cowboy poetry gatherings that happen out here in Alberta that are very Mm -hmm. cool. Um, And there is a lyric focus out here for sure. Um, 
but yeah, like the jam thing feels a little different on the East Coast to me. Mm -hmm. So do you have any new music that you're kind of bringing to the festival or is there something you're looking excited to play? Heck yeah, we have uh, two singles recorded already and then we're heading into studio in August to do three more. So I haven't released in a while. We're taking our time to, to craft this next batch of songs and, and make them exactly what they we want them to be. Um, they are based in country, but we're playing a lot with genre on this next project, which I don't think is super surprising probably to you, Tom, if you listen to my last <laughs> four songs. Every every single and the way that I look at the, the, the music that I create with uh, the folks I collaborate with is we just try to serve each song for what it is and there's always you know an under underlying theme and and the storytelling base in country music but production wise we like to play with a lot of different things and we will definitely be doing that on the next few songs nice definitely looking forward to that are you the type of person who likes to have one single for instance be its own story or do you like to try and build a story over an album or how do you work like that the first four singles, um, they were more almost like uh, buckets. They were their own little universes, which was really, really fun. But for this project, it, they, each each song will have its own bucket, but there will be an overarching theme and uh, something that ties it all together. I think it'll be my first body of work that we've really kind of gotten to take our time with. And I'm interested to see how, yeah, if people can see how they're tied together musically. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm a person who loves a good story, so anything that, that you can really kind of grab onto in music, be it a single or an album, is always nice. So to me, having that extra background is always a, a great feeling to have, for sure. Definitely. Well, and it's interesting because so many of my songs are really personal, but uh, a story song like Christmas Arizona, for example, um, people ask me if that story is true. And I think emotionally it's true, but some of the details absolutely are not. I do not know where that girl and that song came from. She's somewhere inside of me. She will probably be coming out on the, <laughs> the record. Um, and I'm interested to get to know her better. But yeah, inspiration sometimes comes personally or from you know a facet of your character, my character, personality that I'm exploring and don't understand. And also sometimes it comes from some of my friends' stories as well. I mean, yeah, you have to take kind of your surroundings and use that. So I've, I've definitely heard that from a lot of people about using some of your own stuff, but then embellishing a little bit and maybe grabbing a piece from here and there just to make it fit. Yeah, don't let the truth get in the way of a good story, as they say in art. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, that's a real thing. It was funny, actually. I was at a bachelorette party for one of my best buddies a couple of weeks ago, and I had a song sent to me by an artist who had recorded a tune that we co-wrote. And I played it for my friends because the inspiration behind the song was actually uh, from one of the girls in the bachelorette party. She was like secretly seeing this dude for a long time and didn't tell anybody about it, but I knew about it. So I wrote a song about it um, <laughs> with another artist and she was like, oh my gosh, no one is safe. Correct. No one is safe. <laughs> yep. A story has to be told for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. So I have a couple of fun questions that I always like to ask people and it kind of gives a little bit more insight to you and makes you think a little bit more. So first one on my list is what is something on your go-to playlist that somebody wouldn't expect that you listen to? Oh, that they wouldn't expect that I'd listen to? Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I am obsessed with Reckless Paradise by Billy Talent. Okay. And not stop listening to it. It's like one of those songs, the guitar riff is so dirty and it's so, so fast and hits so hard that anytime I need like a little bit of motivation or just want to like get pumped up, that's what I turn on is that, that Billy Talent tune. Mm -hmm. Actually, I love that song too. I, I got to after them recently live when we're here in town. So it was, oh, it was great. So jealous. Yeah. That's a great song. I think it came across like a, a playlist or something. And then I was like, Hey, I got it. I'm gonna have to put this on my playlist and try to learn it on guitar. And if not, just jam out to it anytime I need a little bit of uh, energy. Mm -hmm. I always love when you're listening to something, you're like, Oh, no, oh, damn, that, that sounds good. I want to make sure I have that handy. Totally, mm -hmm. totally. Um, so my next one for you, this one will make you think a little bit. What's one thing that you wish would be asked more in interviews that's not asked enough hmm oh my gosh that's a good question 
You know, it's funny. I feel like I think about interviews almost like conversations more than an interview, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if it would be more questions about me. I feel like I want to know more about the person that I'm talking to. I like it when it's a two-way street. And uh, like hearing that you went to a Billy Talent concert and that your wife is a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that is really interesting, especially because I have a feeling the folks who are tuning in, they tune in, yes, to meet the artist, but also because they trust you and they know that you do a great job interviewing. And I feel like uh, as, a f as a fan of um, podcasts and, and, you know, interview platforms, I always want to know more about the host. For me, actually, Hidden Beats started out that nobody knew I did it. I, I kept my face out of it completely because I'm actually a photographer by trade. So I was behind the camera always doing things and transitioned into this. And it took me a while to adjust to being in front of the camera and actually talking to people just because it's not what I do usually. Well, you know what, Tom? I love that Hidden Beats is the name because uh, that makes total sense. And also you're doing a great job and you look great. You should totally be in front of the camera. You're, you're killing it. I appreciate it, except for the mess in my background here, but. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you? Yeah, that's just how it goes, though. We, uh, yeah, I pushed all my stuff to the side, so don't feel bad if we go over there. There's definitely a mess. So. Oh yeah, you you can't see this side here. I've got <laughs> stuff going on here, but we're gonna be moving in August, so I'm my whole office is kind of a clutter of everything right now. Oh, that's exciting. That's mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome. But also a little bit of a of an adventure of a process. So I don't think anybody's gonna mind that your gear's out. Yeah, and it, it adds character. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Also, you have an artist brain, I assume, and artist brains are, uh, you know, a little bit uh, messy sometimes. My wife hates that because I can literally pick anything out of a messy table because I know where it is, and she hates it that because she's tidy and wants to clean up. And right, yes, hates it. <laughs> it's uh, it's or this or it's organized chaos, as they say. I remember actually, I think it was yesterday, she was looking for something in the one closet. And I said, oh, it's bottom left-hand corner right beside this. And she kind of looked at me like, how the hell did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, those are fun. <laughs> totally. So one of my last questions I have for you, or I guess, yeah, questions, I guess I'll say, is what's a piece of advice that you were given when you were coming up in the music industry that you've held on to really tightly? Um, there's a really great mentor and guitar player that uh, I love out of Toronto, and he said to me once, uh, show up on time, look as good as you can, and again, preface that with look as good as you can, whatever that means to you, because mm -hmm. there's no standard, it's just whatever makes you feel good, and don't suck. Okay. And that that stuck with me. It's so simple. Just like respect the people around you. Try to uh, make sure that you feel good and uh, prepare mostly. Um, mm -hmm. That's it's it's a little goofy, but that one sticks with me a hundred percent. And you know what? That's actually like a pretty good one. I haven't heard that one yet. Don't suck. <laughs> Don't suck. It's one of my favorite phrases. We just uh, yeah, the music doing music as a career or art as a career is such a strange thing to start with. And we're just trying to make different mistakes and uh, suck a little less every day, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, kind of a caveat to that question, what's a piece of advice you would give to somebody with the stuff that you've learned? Um, oh my gosh, I, I you know what, I struggle giving advice a little bit because I feel like we're all uh, we're all moving forward and kind of in the struggle that we choose. And I can give advice, but I feel like uh, a lot of the people who are a, a little bit ahead of me and a little bit behind maybe are in the same boat. But I would say the biggest thing that, that has helped me in my career has probably been finding a community of people that genuinely support and advocate for each other. Um, and obviously, yes, we want to be great at songwriting and performing and, and really put time into our crafts. But I think there's so much inspiration and um, almost like a grounding thing that happens when you're working on art or, you know, the music business with people who really genuinely advocate for you and are doing the same thing. It's uh, that that was a big change for me. Mm -hmm. And I, and community is great in every form. So find that community that fits you for sure. Totally. And there's so many different communities within, you know, country music and, and music in general. And so you just sometimes it takes a hot sec to find your people, but they're there. Keep looking. Mm -hmm. Ever, everyone has someone. Totally. Totally. That's pretty much all I have for you. Um, I went, oh, actually, here's a good one. I, I, I wrote down at the bottom. I wanted to know what you meant by on your Instagram profile. It says, <laughs> I write country music and steal my grandma's clothes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually do steal my grandma's clothes. That's a real thing. <laughs> my uh, 
grandmas, they have saved their, their, like a lot of their clothes that they wore in like the seventies and eighties. And I literally, actually my grandma Marilyn, she had a collection of suits that she okay. wore and she just gave me like 12 beautiful suits that fit me really well. Apparently we're the same size and have the same <laughs> body type. So that's pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, I really love thrifting and finding secondhand clothing. Uh, I dig 1970s kind of era fashion, but obviously sway a little bit. We're a little bit more 80s today with the headband for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I uh, I take my grandma's clothes. And then also there's this weird thing that's been happening, Tom, where other people have been giving me their grandma's clothes. So <laughs> I had a friend come over and she's like, I have this like beautiful um, down bright. It's like fire engine red satin uh, winter jacket. And she's like, I don't think I would wear this, but my, uh, my fiance's mom or grandma, actually, this was her jacket. And I just thought of you instantly. And so she brought me that jacket and I was like, okay, <laughs> this is working. This is good. You're putting um, it out there in the world. Yes. If anybody has like a grandma or if there's any grandmas listening that uh, need to get rid of some of their clothes, please let me know. I would be happy to, uh, to take them off your hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll make sure to, to send them your way if we get anything. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Well, well, so that's officially all I have written down on my notes here. Is there any kind of last tidbits of information or notes you want to give to your fans? Yeah, absolutely. Just a reminder to everyone to make sure that you head out to Cavendish. If you're already out there, grab your tickets. Uh, it's happening July 7th to 9th. I'm performing July 7th on the Colliding Tides kitchen stage. And Luke Combs is the headliner that night. The Cadillac 3 are playing during the day. Nice Horse and Amy Heff are going to be there. It's a pretty stellar lineup that I'm really, really grateful to be part of. So, uh, yeah, if you're if you're in Cavendish and or PEI or the East Coast, make sure you get your tickets. And please come say hi to me. I need, I need some more East Coast pals. There you go. We'll make sure to link everything. That way someone can click on it and get some tickets or anything right away. Awesome. And thank you uh, so much for having me today, Tom. Really uh, great to be here at Hidden Beats and uh, to get to know you a little better. No, I appreciate you. I appreciate you spending time with me. I always love get to getting to know people and learning more about you and your music. And I'm a fan. I listen to your music now and it's definitely going to be on my playlist. So hopefully others will take that too. Oh man, thank you so much. And make sure if you add it to your playlist, make sure you give it a really, really weird playlist title, especially on Spotify <laughs> so that I can see it and then reshare it on a TikTok and um, make fun of it a little bit. That would be good for me. <laughs> can't hear you oh there we go you there just we go oh, that was weird goodness. that was weird that's so strange we're like hooked right into the internet here so i anyway uh, but that's all good it's part of the joy mm -hmm. i mean and we're about it done anyway so that works out awesome i'll cut that part out at the end <laughs> perfect sounds good well yeah thanks so much for your time tom really appreciate it, it was yeah, great thank you here. thank you and you enjoy the rest of your day and definitely looking forward to more music coming from you heck yeah uh yeah should be fall is kind of what we're thinking once we get the next couple of tunes done so sounds good we'll look out for it wicked you have a great rest of your day we'll talk to you soon you uh, too also, yeah let me know if you need anything else as well no oh, sounds good perfect thanks man we'll talk to you later okay bye bye